Welcome to That's a Wrap, the channel where I review TV shows, movies, and movie trailers, and sometimes dabble in theories. But today's TV show that we will be reviewing is episode three, The Power Broker, from the hit Disney Plus Marvel Studios, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. But before I get into my review of this episode, if you are enjoying the content, please subscribe to the channel and smash that like button. It will greatly help me out. And if you're not caught up with episode three of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, please consider this your spoiler warning and consider this your friendly reminder that you are missing out on one hell of a show. I think this episode three was probably the best one yet. It was, I, I, I feel the, the more thought out episode. I mean, we still got three more episodes to go, but from the dialogue to the way it was shot to just everything about this episode three, it felt like a movie. It definitely had a, a box office theater feel to it. I mean, the cinematography uh, was amazing. The script for this episode was outstanding. The acting on everyone's part was on another level. Uh, not saying that episode one or episode two, the acting was wasn't great. I mean, it was really, really good on, on both episode one and episode two, no complaints about the acting, but this episode three, maybe it's because Zemo was brought into this episode. This is where we get our, um, basically Zemo throughout the whole episode and so much more. It felt action packed. It felt, it just felt like I said, it was like a big budget film and they just the, all the actors from the extras the stunt doubles the the choreographers for the for the action scenes uh they just kicked it up a notch and i uh, hats off to the to the cast and crew for falcon and the winter soldier i i just feel lucky as a as a fan not just a marvel fan because i've said it before i'm a marvel i'm a dc fan i'm a movie fan period but i feel I don't want to say blessed because then that sound that, that makes it sound too too fanboy but I, I you know we're lucky that we're getting to see back-to-back -back shows from disney plus where the writing and the acting and production value is so high that let, let I me mean, just take a step back and appreciate what we're watching and what marvel studios is giving us uh it's it's actually pretty pretty neat to see that kind of a, a talent i'm gonna say in all aspects from the executives to corporate to the acting to the extras to the like I, like i even said in wanda from the people that get the coffees or whatever you know the waters the whatever needs to be get from all the way to the top from all the way to the bottom hats off to all you guys you guys are putting on a hell of a show and episode three was was proof of that labor uh wow what from the like i said from the beginning to the end it was just one wow from to another wow from one like what's going on to another what's going on so many revelations so many easter eggs so much call to to the x-men i mean the internet's gone crazy with how much x-men was in this episode and i get it that they went to madripoor from there we got the bar that wolverine frequents a license plate that referenced uh, one of the comic books that was said in Madripoor. I mean, just the list goes on and on of, of how much X-Men was dropped in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. On top of just the story that we're following, which was great. I mean, we got a lot more backdrop to Sokovia. You know, we got Sharon Carter in there acting all shady. 
we got the flag smashers acting like terrorists all of a sudden and then we had that amazing easter egg that i don't think anyone saw wakanda stepping in to this show but when i saw that at the end like everyone was jaw my jaw just dropped and you hear those Wakanda drums in the background of that little short. I've never been so excited for like five seconds of footage. But when that happened, I should have known when you saw the, and it didn't even ding on me when I was seeing the, the little ball, the, the vibranium, you know, little pebbles or balls or whatever. It didn't even ding on me. Like I was just like, what, what are those things? And then Bucket keeps on going and finds another one. It didn't dong on me. Uh, honestly, it didn't at all until he turned around and, and he was like, oh, I was waiting for when you, I was waiting to see when you will show up. And you hear that boo -doo -doo, boom, boom. I was like, oh my God, what a great ending to an amazing episode. This, this episode left so, they didn't, I don't think it answered any questions at all. I think this episode gave us more questions and answered none of them and we're only three episodes left i think this was the longest episode but that could have been just you know internet fodder i'm not sure if there's going to be any one any less shorter ones or longer ones but it gives us for the next i would say what 50 minutes each episode just to be safe that is gonna be the greatest three 150 minutes that we are going to get so many answers i think uh, coming up and who would have thought Zemo over here like Batman with billions and a private jet his own little Alfred I mean I just as soon as he I saw him walking into the up to the plane and Sam goes oh you're wealthy too I was like oh here we go it's Batman he should have just been like doing the whole the voice of Batman but yeah so you know who knew I, I don't think it gave us any hints in uh in civil war that he was this wealthy and how about the the flag smashers we were being led up to this one world no flags and and all this kind of like sounded great kind of a thing and then all of a sudden you know the, the carly turns into a freaking terrorist and just kills people i mean it was one thing to be robin hood but then all of a sudden to just go and switch over to terrorists and just kill innocent lives whether you agree with the, what you know the government is doing or not those soldiers aren't guilty of anything but she took it in a whole militant aspect and said you know what this is the only language they 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 understand is fear and death and i was like oh no i was like this this turn quick not that i was sympathetic to the group because we all kind of figured out that I mean, for the most part, we all think that the Flag Smashers stand for good, like the cause is good, but eventually, like all causes, they start off good, but then eventually you get too powerful, you get too full of yourself, and that becomes the downfall. And we've seen that all, you know, in every aspect. I mean, not to go off topic, but look at what happened with the Hillary Clinton Foundation. I don't know, I'm not aware if it's still running or not, but it started off doing really, really good. And then, you know, through the decades, it turned into something money, money laundering. There was a lot of accusations. I don't know if any of them have been proven, but it's just to give a little bit of an example of real life stuff where something can start off really, really meaning well, but then end up being so corrupt. Again, allegedly, I don't want to get, you know, in trouble for, for, you know, defaming or anything like that. But yeah. I mean that when 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 it switched like that it was kind of kind of just like I mean I kind of expected it to be honest but not in that way and so quick cuz you know she had the loss I'm assuming it's like an aunt maybe a mother someone that passed away that was close to her um and you get that sweet moment where you're like oh but then you know she switches and all of a sudden is commi committing these terrorist acts so and I, I, I've already said it in other episodes and I'll say it again. Sam's delivery in comedic lines, Hollywood, can we get this man in some 
true standalone comedies, please? Like, I don't know how Anthony Mackie is not killing it in, in, in comedy, action comedy, something. I mean, you have Kevin Hart doing them. You got Dwayne Johnson doing them. Yeah, I think Anthony Mackie's probably could be better than them. So let's get Hollywood. Let's get on it. Let's get this man some some good comedy movies. I know he does a lot of action and he wants to probably be seen as an action star. But come on, if anybody's going to tell me that Anthony Mackie isn't a great comedic actor, then you're playing with yourself. The way his his facial express, his expressions, his mannerism, his line delivery is just on another level. And not that he's wasting his talent because he's given us great material here, but I really want to see him in, an, in a comedy, just in either an action comedy or a straight up comedy. Let's make that happen. I want to see it. And I think it's going to take his stardom just to a whole different level that whole thing like i'm dressed like a pimp and all that stuff and even when he was drinking the the snake shot i guess is what you want to call it uh again all of it all of it is just great and he and he has such a way to go from comedy to action or to serious when he you could see the concern he had for bucky going on winter soldier and he's like like almost wanting to step in but then he could take it into the comedy route or just go in from one and the other so seamlessly so come on hollywood do us all a favor and get this man into some comedy i lo i love the fact that the book that we see bucky having where he has his list of names we found out that it is the the same one that Steve Rogers had and was writing all the stuff that he needed to catch up on. I thought that was just a beautiful addition to further connect that attachment. Not that we didn't know already. I mean, God God knows that Steve broke more more rules, more laws uh, to save Bucky and to defend Bucky. So. It was just a nice little extra, like the cherry on top of the bromance that was Bucky and Steve, that he still has that that uh, that book, you know, where he now has his, his his names of redemptions, I guess, and the book of of redemption and the, and the names also because he has names that he wants to like kind of make amends but making amends by bringing them to justice is is what it would be so i thought it was pretty nice and the fact that when when sam was like oh I, i'm gonna i should have broke i should have destroyed the shield or I, i'm gonna i should have instead of putting it in the museum i should have destroyed this the, the the shield but then bucky steps in like look before you destroy that shield i'm gonna take it from u.s agent and i'm gonna take that shield and some people are like, oh, he's going to destroy it too. No, he's straight saying, I'm going to I'm going to take the mantle of Captain America if you don't. And that's my mission because this dude does not deserve him. And yep, again, we're, we're we're all with him on that. And on a little, you know, now that I brought up U.S. agent, that scene where I think it was right in the beginning where they're basically one step behind from Bucky. And, I mean, from Sam and and Buck. And they go to that safe house that Car Carly went to with the flag smashers for safe haven for a little bit. When he, when, when U.S. agents said, oh, do you know who I am? And the guy said, I don't care. Come on. Is that not all of us? Is that not uh, the whole population <laughs> saying, yeah, we don't care who you are, bro. Like you are not our captain america you will never be our captain america so you'll be here using that trying to like oh what because you're wearing you know you're wearing the uniform and you have the a shield that we need to like respect you like we did with cap no captain america like did a lot for for people to respect them and to get that kind of honor when he walked into a room as far as the MCU, I'm not going to go into real life, even though I will take this opportunity to tell some MCU MCU fans to calm down on the threats 
from the actor that's playing U.S. Agent. Let's not give this community a bad name. I know everybody right now, a little t rant that I'm going to do is even with the DC, with the Snyder, you know, verse or restore the Snyder verse, hashtag res restore the Snyder verse. It's getting a little bit too much, but I, I, I respect the, 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 the love that fans have for this property, but to, to badger someone that's just playing a role and not to be able to separate from the fantasy from real life it's kind of shameful and that needs to stop so you know i, I mean i get it we're all passionate it's a it's something that you know it's taking out 11 years of our lives and we're you know completely committed and i get the love and i respect the love but i can't respect the actions when you're doing it on, you know, ghost accounts and not even even not even putting your real name, you know, you're kind of using these burner accounts and you're harassing people. That's never cool. So anyways, I hope the community kind of self checks each other and says, hey, nah, we, we, we got to come calm down because we don't want to give this community a bad name just because someone doesn't like an actor that's taking up a mantle. We're going to see it. It's going to happen, whether it be from U.S. Agent or Bucky or Sam. And I know people would rather have Bucky or Sam uh, take it. And I'm sure one of them will take the mantle going for forward. But, you know, we got to remember these are actors that are moving on to, especially like Robert Downey Jr., Chris Evans. And, you know, maybe Chris Hemsworth after uh, Thor uh, number four, they might go on to different uh, projects and to harass them for doing other projects. You know, it would it's just a bad look on our community. So anyways, that's my little rant. So so anyways, back to the subject, I thought that it was um like it was pretty funny when he says i don't care who you are like i'm like yeah that's all of us um and then on, on a little different tirade or a little different rant so i had put out a video about where i said captain america our captain america steve rogers was he evil i asked that question and on reddit and even on some places online, on Facebook and Twitter, I got roasted. Like, oh no, Captain America is always good. He did this because I was showing that a lot of these decisions ultimately led to deaths, led to a lot of property, billions in damages, the fracture of friendships and, and just so on. And I, and I laid it out. And I was kind of vindicated a little bit where Zemo is having that dialogue with them on the plane. And he's saying, you know, when he brings it up to, to Bucky and he says, you know what it is like to follow someone blindly and, you know, he could do no wrong. And that was my little vindication of it, that even the show that the MCU acknowledges. Yeah, Steve Rogers was acting on what he thought was the correct you know direction the correct action but that doesn't mean he was good that doesn't mean he was correct that actually makes him even more dangerous because he wasn't able like we saw and even like i said he's hard-headed he's he's one he's goal oriented and he has that tunnel vision just like unfortunately some you know tyrants in uh, in history and i got lambasted i mean i i got told them i was called a moron i was called an idiot i was like oh you know you're just a hater of you know captain america and i feel like i said I, I felt a little bit vindicated as far as even the show not just the dialogue obviously the writers and mcu and everybody they, they put it in there but it's something that a lot of us know and saw and i'm glad that the mcu is is bringing that forward because a lot of hypothetical lives of course we're dealing with fantasy but in this world that we are enjoying a lot of people lost their, their lives and some of the decisions that captain america steve rogers did led to some horrific outcomes and it's something that in that dialogue, even Bucky and Sam kind of just 
had to put their head down and say, you know what? I mean, it's right. He's right. You know, no matter what you feel about Zemo, uh, he w- he was right in that moment. And you know what? Like, I I think all of us at the end of this episode end up being Zemo fans. Like, I I, I actually liked him. He was helping Bucky and Sam. There might be an alternative, an ulterior motive there. But he was, he came out funny that I, I know everyone that, that, that's our, it's only been not even 24 hours since the show drop and uh, episode three drop and that meme or, or just him in the club dancing for not even like two seconds has already been beaten to death. That, that joke has been, you know, we're, we're beating a dead horse as they, as they say, but God darn it. If that wasn't one of the best scenes that, you know, that weird ass, I want to call it white boy dance, but I know I'll get in, you know, people get offended, but you know, that, 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 that I don't know how to dance kind of move. Oh, that was so, I, I laughed along with everybody else. And it was, I'm not gonna lie. It was probably the highlight of the whole episode. That I think everyone remembers episode three. Is going to remember episode three for that little dancing, and you know, obviously, the the Wakanda crossover at the end of episode uh, three. Um, yeah, but wow, what a, what a great episode! Like I said, I mean, I could go down breaking it down scene for scene. And I might do a video for that, but I just thought I should just get on this and and just give this episode praise. It was so good. So, so good. And I can't wait. I wish Friday, next Friday was already here so we could see more of this story um, pan out. And uh, But it's worth the wait because we're going to have so much fun with this in uh, this week leading up to the uh, episode four. I could already see the theories. I'm working on a a few theories. I know that I heard theories about, you know, um, Sharon Carter probably being the power broker and just so many, you know, this person's the power broker. This person's the power broker. Oh, what's going to happen with this? Oh, you know, even with the, with the, with the X-Men, I had a theory about the mutants and I'm still not, uh, I mean, it was probably most, it was, I ain't going to lie. 80% 80% of it is leaning to debunked in that theory that I put out, but I'm still holding out hope because it wasn't, it wasn't completely buried, but it's, it's in the ground and, and dirt's being thrown on it. So I'm hoping that episode four will give it life, but it's not looking all that great. Even though, like I said earlier, with all these X-Men Easter eggs that we saw through this whole episode, I, I think we're going to see the X-Men a little bit sooner than we think. And if not, I'm not saying the, the whole crew, but we might get one. We might get one X-Men that appears before this series is over. Uh, and I, again, the, the theory that I'm saying that it got put out, I, I said that Wanda uh, outburst is the reason we're having or we're seeing some of these super soldiers you know from the flag smashers but obviously we found out that there was 20 vials and they gave eight to you know the super uh, super soldiers I, i'm gonna call them now that we they gave eight so we have 12 and we don't really we don't have eight we have seven because one was shot letting the other ones get away um so we have seven active alive quote unquote super soldiers even though maybe there's a chance that still one that has something to do with the whole mutation but it's not looking good for my theory and there's 12 vials left now the 12 vials obviously is not enough to be able to create the kind of mutants world that we're all expecting we're going to get but maybe there's a twist and maybe something gets you know done or developed but so it's not looking good for that theory but i'm still holding out hope and what kind of surprise we're going to get now that we know wakanda is involved in this story i mean who knows i don't think anyone saw this i don't i I, i've yet to see a channel or a a 
a website that called this crossover. So I think we're all pretty stunned on that. And I want to see where what they do and how, how are they going to enhance this story. So again, I think 10 out of 10 of this episode three. What a great episode. You know, stay tuned to the channel. I'm going to have more um, videos, theory videos before episode four comes out. Um, but I wanted to get this out just as a reaction. My point of view or how I felt watching this episode was just a masterpiece. Um, there's a couple of things as a history nut, especially when we went into Sharon Carter's apartment. I saw a lot. I'm an Alexander the Great fan. And if you take a look at that last scene or the scene where they're going in there, that helmet, if you ever seen the movie Alexander with Colin Farrell, no, not Colin Farrell. Yeah, Colin Farrell. That's the helmet he wore in that movie. And it's meant to represent the helmet of Alexander the Great. Uh, that was the little Easter egg that I saw because I'm a history nut and uh, among others. So I'm planning to, you know, maybe make a video about that. But I'm definitely working on a few videos revolving around this episode three, along with episode two and episode one, just encompassing basically everything that we've seen. So anyways, um, Without that ramble, stay tuned, you know, st uh, stay tuned to the channel, subscribe to the channel, as I said, and like always, that's a wrap.